first, it, the slide that you have in front of you is roughly what the perceived world was a year ago before the more recent revisions. We had, we have three measures of employment that uh, regular reports on the state of Wisconsin, the first of which is the household survey. That's a small survey where you actually call the individuals and ask them the simple question, are you working? The second survey is where you would survey select, and I would say small, three to five percent of employers, and they ask the question, how many people do you have working for you? And then the third measure, which is labeled the QCEW, which stands for Quarterly Census of Employment and Wages, is actually based off of the unemployment insurance records. Those records actually count how many bodies are actually paid for for unemployment insurance, and so you have a firm count of who, in fact, is employed. That covers about 96% of the employment. That one, therefore, is practically a universal sample. The three measures last year were giving different results. The household survey was showing increases. The quarterly census of employment and wages was showing fairly sizable increases, but the establishment survey was not. That was then. If we look at it now, if you look at the CES series or the establishment series, it had reported that Wisconsin was actually losing jobs through 2012. The Bureau of Labor Statistics about 10 days ago released a brand new series of estimates and did a revision. And if you'll go through all of that language that you see in front of you, which it says the benchmark years uh, for 2012 CES employment estimates are replaced by census-derived estimates. We will use third quarter instead of second quarter. As a result of these revisions, uh, the sampling error was much larger than previous estimates, and here's the correction. Translated at all means from the BLS, oops, we goofed. The third quarter is, in fact, better for rebenchmarking. And as you see with the difference between the old series and the new series, whereas before it would be reporting that Wisconsin was losing jobs, in fact, Wisconsin gained jobs steadily throughout all of 2011 and throughout 2012. The Bureau of Labor Statistics in their previous estimates significantly had underestimated Wisconsin job growth. Displayed here is a contrast between what would be the typical state revision or the average state and Wisconsin. You'll observe that in each and every year, Wisconsin had a positive revision. Most states have about an equal number of down revisions as up revisions. Ours was consistently biased in one direction. And in particular, the last two revisions indicated errors in excess of 2% that would be way past uh, statistical significance. Uh, in the case of Wisconsin, the revisions for both March 2012 and December 2012 were statistically significant at the highest level of confidence. Displayed here is a map roughly showing where the states with the largest revisions are. Wisconsin, uh, West Virginia, North Dakota, Montana, Wyoming were all in excess of 2%. Almost most states had an upward revision because, they, because of the timing of it. They seemed to have missed some of the turn, upturn across the country, but ours were among the most profound. In this particular case, to put it into the job count number, if we consider the difference between the previous estimates and the revised estimates, the new house establishment survey shows the job count was 70,000 higher at certain months than the prior series. If we do a quick contrast to our neighbors, you can see the contrast between the revision that Wisconsin experienced versus Minnesota. Minnesota's revision was relatively slight. Ours was in some point seven times greater. It's also true in Iowa. You could actually add Iowa's and Minnesota's revisions together and we would still beat them two to one. Illinois, given this, the fact that Illinois as a county is about two and a half times larger than Wisconsin, one would think that their revision would be in total number higher, but it isn't. Wisconsin's revision was higher than Illinois, and it's also true that Wisconsin's revision was higher than Michigan's. Displayed here, the state in red is the one state that had an upward revision seven out of the last seven revisions. We are the only state that fits that description. 
Part of the reason for our revisions lies in where the greatest revisions occurred. They lie primarily in our industries that have a highly seasonal component. It makes one wonder whether the Bureau of Labor Statistics in Washington understands the concept of snow. If you look at our construction and leisure and hospitality industries in particular, you see revisions where the job counts are 9 and 7 percent higher. These are firms with strong seasonal components and that have easy exits and entries so that if you aren't queuing, setting your benchmark to third quarter, you will miss new entrants into the fields and you will attribute some of the folks that I sold off the business to my old partner. They'll be registered under a different name. You wouldn't pick up that transition, although certainly we here would see it. Here's the contrast in year-over-year -year growth between the original estimate in blue and the current estimate, which is in red. And you can see persistently it is stronger throughout the entire period. Now, if we do the same three together, if we can put together the quarterly census of employment and wages and the establishment survey, they now tend to match up at least through September 2012. That's the time that they did the benchmark. Since then, you know, we, we'll have to wait and see how it all unfolds throughout, but at least the estimates now through September 12th are consistent. For the state of Wisconsin, the state of Wisconsin remains, unemployment rate remains significantly below the U.S. average. And we are one of these 24 states with an unemployment rate that is statistically significantly below the U.S. average. Partly why we're seeing the gains in jobs and maintaining a lower unemployment rate is our manufacturing remains strong throughout this recovery. Our manufacturing, as measured by the Milwaukee Purchasing Managers Index, has risen to 56.5. Anything above 50 indicates an expansion. While we had a weak patch for a while, we've completely recovered and now we're matching or exceeding the U.S. pace in manufacturing. Partly that's driven by what's happened with our export markets. Wisconsin exports set a record in 2012, and we are adding to that record as we speak. The January number for 2013 was ahead of 2000, January 2012 as well. One of the bigger developments for us now is the housing industry is now starting to turn around. Where it had been flat beginning about mid last year, it is starting to rise, and our building permits are increasing, <coughs> suggesting we should expect stronger gains in construction. And first rule of weather forecasting is to look out the window. Uh, withholding collections are probably your best real-time indicator of the pace of the economy. Withholding collections are rising higher again. To me, the more stunning development, as I got this from DWD last yesterday, was our initial unemployment compensation claims are now running below pre-recession levels. Our 2013 levels, uh, un initial unemployment compensation claims through week 11, average 12,800. That is the lowest level since calendar year 2000. Partly with, because of the strong employment growth that we saw in 11, per capita income growth through, uh, in 2011, Wisconsin placed in the top quarter of states. <clears throat> 